Today, we are going to be rapidly choosing color schemes and applying them to our interface like a boss. Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna talk about color schemes once again. And this time I created a UI design and then what we're gonna do is we're going to use a service. Uh, this is called coloresinspo.com. We're gonna use a few of these templates. I'm going to show you exactly how I would use these in order to create really quickly awesome color schemes for your UI design. So if you're somebody who has a hard time coming up with color schemes from you know by your own, well, this is gonna be a great video for you. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Before we begin, Linode makes it easy and affordable to host your website, your portfolio, your online store, and more on whatever technology stack you use. Getting up and running is fast and easy with one-click app installs like WordPress and Drupal. With back-end access to your server, customization and scaling options are all but limitless. If you just need something small like an online portfolio to showcase your work, Linode has you covered. If you need to manage tons of clients' websites and reliably serve them to millions of visitors, Linode can do that too. So sign up using the link below in the description to get $20 in credit on your new Linode account. All right, so this is a look at the actual UI design that I created. It's kind of like a hybrid high fidelity, but also kind of skeleton UI. I'm kind of lazy, I didn't finish out everything, but you get the general gist. It's a pretty complete, UI enough for us to experiment with what different color schemes look like. So I'm going to duplicate this and I'm just going to move it over a little bit more. And the idea here uh, is to use some sort of colors service. I'm going to link, I'm going to try to remember to link in the description, a bunch of, of these uh, color theme, color picking resources. And I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna use one today because it's really quick and easy for this type of demo. Uh, and that is located at colors in, colors in spo, whatever, .com. It'll be linked in the description. And it's just really simple. Uh, you can just grab any of the color codes just by clicking on this and it, it copies the hex color code of it. And then you can start to integrate. This is the one that we're gonna use. Um, I, I wanna make sure that this particular window is always on top. So I, I just got this cool program uh, right here where I can just pin any uh, window on top so I can work while looking at these color schemes. All right, so I, uh, by the way, that app is called Desk Pins uh, and it's free. So what we wanna do, this is the second one. Uh, we want to just basically start experimenting and I just, I kinda wanna stick to the same little color palette for each one of these and we're gonna do like four of them. So, um, well, the first one, I'll just do the very first one that's listed right now, which is this one. And so I think what we'll do is make the background Maybe we'll go for like a darker version. So we'll copy that color code and then I'll move this over and we'll paste that in. All right, so still pretty ugly. And that's because now we've lost some uh, contrast with the text on top. Um, I think with the sidebar, you and by the way, when you do this, you don't have to use these exact values. Uh, you can use a lot of different things. Like or we could say, okay, we'll use that color for this sidebar. And you could completely do that. Me, I think I'm gonna um, just do something like this. I'm gonna grab this color. And then, and this is something I commonly do. I will just raise the, uh, the, uh, the lightness or lower it just slightly like that. All right. So we're coming along so far. Now, what I'll do next is we'll take, uh, let's see here. Let's make this all white for now. Actually having this pin is a little bit annoying because it's, it's uh, going over everything. Um, and let's work on these, these, uh, these elements right here. So let's give that a certain color. Um, so we can go back to our thing, see if there's something like some shade or something, but no, these are really all quite different. So when it comes to these type of overlays, we want to kind of stick within the same uh, values uh, as the current background. So if I take them all, and then maybe this time we'll go darker, not too much darker, maybe right around there, that's good. All right, so 
I, that's supposed to be a part of this group. There we go. So now make these all white. All right, so now it's starting to come together and it's looking quite different already from the original, but we're not just done yet. So this uh, color scheme did have like a, a few, you know, uh, complementary colors like this one. We could probably make like this icon that color. So paste that there. We could probably also make this and these. Let's group those up that color as well. And then in that case, this is unfortunately sitting on top. Let's make this all the way on top here. Okay, now that's white. Uh, and then looking at that color scheme again, which my toolbar unfortunately went away, uh, we could probably use maybe this color as well. So we'll try, um, let's, let's get in here and get that. And this, 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 so all the headings basically. Let's try making them that color. Oh, what the hell? It didn't work. There we go. All right, and let's see. Oh, this little icon there. There's like a down arrow icon. We can hit the I key for the eyedropper. Oops. There we go. We'll do this. And then finally, we'll take this, the border. We'll make that color. And we'll get in there into those fills and just make those fills this background color. So look at that. Pretty freaking cool for just literally a couple minutes uh, while using, you know, our color picker guide right here. Now, of course, we didn't use the gray. Uh, again, you can only use maybe two colors out of these to really come up with something that's interesting. And then also experiment on your own. So let's try another one. So let's move this over here. So the next one we'll try, let's see, we'll, we'll try this one. This looks vibrant, right? Um, so let's see what we can do with this. Let's go a little bit crazy and we'll take this here and make this our background color. That might be quite dangerous on your eyeballs though. So paste that in. See now that is just too bright. I don't like that. So we can just move it over a little bit in terms of lightness. All right, so that's good right there. Next up, we'll go ahead and take maybe all of our type elements, make a black, and then we'll come and take these elements right here, which is, these are all a group if I move this off. And again, we'll use that same technique. We'll get the background color. And just go very slightly darker. Look at that. So this is almost its own color scheme already. I uh, What else did we have here? So that color scheme had a few other colors here. Um, this one is real similar actually to the current one that we have. Um, you could probably go with this one or maybe even the blue. Uh, but I really like these colors together already. I mean, the, the previous color scheme along with this sort of pinkish color, I think works real well. So then we could just take maybe this. We Actually, this blue works too. But if you really want uh, to minimize the amount of colors and really make it pink, you could do that as well. Uh, we'll take this. I don't like those being filled in with some blue color. You can make those white even if you wanted to as well. I think we'll do that. And, and look at that three unique color schemes in like a few minutes. Let's do another one. So the next one, we'll try, let's see here, where's my app at, or window, there we go. Let's try doing for the next one, how about this one? Kind of reminds you of Facebook colors. So let's make the background of this one, kind of like this neutral, kind of, it's not real dark, it's not real light, kind of like our other examples have been. I will take this blue right here. So I'm gonna copy that. We're gonna make that, oops. We're gonna make that the background color. Now you may be thinking there's a way this is gonna work, but trust me, it will work. I What we can do now, that same technique, we'll take this here for the containers, the same color, make it darker. 
very subtle. I mean, it's so subtle. You barely even want to move your mouse. All right, and then we'll take I, all of our type elements. Let's just make those white to make sure they contrast very well. Now this right here, this color, I mean, they do contrast pretty well, but I think not quite enough. Uh, what other colors did we have to use here from that palette? Um, we have this color. Um, let's try using this for these primary like call to action buttons and icons. So uh, let's copy this and we'll go and paste that. Do the same thing here. And then um, this sidebar, that's just too crazy looking. Um, I think what I, let's see what that I, yeah, we'll do this one right here. This should be good for the sidebar. Oh, it didn't work. And you don't even have to. What I could do is just uh, come down here. There we go. It's roughly around what the same value of what that was anyways. Um, the learn more button, we can, I have a stark contrast checker, which I did a video about this. You can do, uh, check my YouTube search for that. A rapid contrast checker. So right here, if you select the foreground element based on the element uh, behind it, ooh, that's not right. I don't know why. Oh, it's because it's a part of a group right now. So if I right click, it's not a part of a group. That's very strange because this says it's uh, th this is the background color. It's not. It's this this version right here. Sometimes it doesn't work very well, unfortunately. I think maybe if I ungroup this, this will work. Nope. What are you doing, man? Well, that's no good. All right. Well, what we might want to do is change this to maybe even um, this side color right here. And I bet you that has a good amount of contrast right there. And it does from those two colors. And look at that. I mean, this is just freaking awesome. Um, what about this here though? I'm not sure about this color. It kind of doesn't contrast great. So let's just experiment on our own with this. I mean, we could try this. That works, but then we lose some color. I kind of liked having other color. So we can just stay in the same area up here and just try to find a color that really contrasts well. I think right in that value, like if you go down, you lose that contrast, you go up, and you kind of get into a sweet spot. But then if you go up too high, then your eyes hurt with the red and the blue. So it's just right around here that looks like it'll work pretty well. But again, we could come down further. What about yellow? I mean, that works. This green will work. Green and this uh, sort of blue works. So choosing your colors, you know, you have fun with it. You just got to make sure that it contrasts well with all your other elements. So this, I think this time we'll opt just to perhaps do that, or we could just fill it in like that. I think I'm just gonna stay like that right around there. And by the way, we could take this and we can say, okay, maybe we wanna go lighter like that. And that will really increase your contrast while still having some color. Look at that. I mean, this is so cool. Just how we become, I think this is my favorite though. I mean, there's something, I actually this one though, maybe we should go dark with that. All right, and then get in here real quickly. These had opacity on them, so it was making it look funky. Take the opacity down on all of these. Yeah, just so cool. Um, let's do one more. Let's do a crazy, something crazy. Um, something that's really different. Let me go back to our, let's go over here. My dog out there is barking like hell. Let's try something crazy like this. Like how could we possibly make a UI element with some of these colors? Um, it might be really difficult, but we'll see. So let's grab, I think we'll grab, uh, yeah, we'll grab this one, the very bottom one, and that could be the background. So let me move this over. All right, uh, yeah, this is gonna be a good one. Um, now, what about for the sidebar? So the sidebar, 
we can try choosing uh, maybe this one. So it's like the maximum contrast between those two, at least in that palette. All right, so I could see something possibly working out here. Let's take all this, no, let's do this first, The back, these uh, panel backgrounds. Again, I'm gonna do that same technique. You don't have to do that, I just really like doing that. Okay, so then we'll take this stuff, make it black. And then maybe this border, we can make this color. We can take these and either make them uh, transparent or white. Um, I think I'll just make it the same color as the background there. Uh, the icons probably can be that purple as well. So really, I'm, I'm, I may just end up only using two colors from that palette, but that's okay. It'll work just fine. Learn more. I think this time we'll make this one white. So it'll contrast more. <laughs> and there you go. That's uh, definitely a more, uh, for me, I wouldn't probably ever have a site that's just, this is the only option. This would be more of like just an interesting, fun color scheme. Like if you allowed people to choose color scheme on schemes on your site. So now uh, what we can do is I can uh, prototype these all and link them together real quickly. And then we can see how the interfaces change between each other just by a quick click. Look at that, so cool. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. You learned something new. I'll make the XD file available so you can experiment on your own if you wish using that same template. Now, as always, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys soon, goodbye.